Hello. I'm Eartha Kitt. Join me as we take a look at the history of the most fabulous cat of them all. Catwoman. Wow. What is it about Catwoman that has fascinated fans for so many years? Well, Catwoman is ambitious, courageous, dominant, salubrious, sensual, feline, sexy, calculating, dynamic, feminine, resourceful, scorching, vicious, confident, with kind of a tongue-in-cheek wit. A little like me, wouldn't you say? <laughs> but perhaps it's that she's evolved over time. The voluptuous vamp made her very first appearance in the DC comic book series Batman, when she was simply known as the Cat. My first recollection of Catwoman is that she was the first person who I was aware that boys wanted to be with and I wanted to be. Well, the key thing I always remember about her is that when she first showed up, she didn't have the costume. She didn't have any costume. She was a jewel thief, and I think she had, like, a, a mask on that was disguising her as an old woman. Probably the first version of Catwoman I ran across was in Julie Schwartz's edited issues of Batman in the 1960s. At that point, she was slightly dangerous, cat burglar cracking a cat of nine tails style whip. She was always... The uh, femme fatale, one of the few characters that are in Batman's universe that can stand up to him. But Catwoman, like Batman, also had to live with a dual identity, that of Selina Kyle. Selina Kyle is a woman who is extremely strong, extremely focused, and yet extremely confused sometimes. <laughs> Selina's background was always mystery. Uh, and we've toyed with that. And there have been various versions as to who she was and where she came from. But most of the times when she appeared, she simply appeared. She's simply just this mysterious socialite. I like that about her. She really has this great multiple personality, but not in the psychotic sense of the word, of wanting to live her own life, whatever that life may be. In my mind, um, Selena Kyle is a character that's total contempt for the world. She's bitter, she's beaten, and she's tougher than nails. She's gone through lots of different incarnations, um, and each one of them just brings another aspect of her personality more vividly to life and makes her an even more interesting character, because even though we know this is comic book history being rewritten, we don't really know which is the real Selena so we don't know what motivates her, and all of them are really good motivations. Catwoman is probably the biggest character in comics for changing her look over time. The ones that I remember from the 40s was that she always had this big skirt and these high heel boots and, uh, and then this sort of little tiny cat mask that was on top of her hair. And certainly from a run across rooftops approach, it was not exactly the most realistic thing that you would do. She's had more outfits than just about any other superhero, heroine, or villainess. And she's had more different colors of spandex, capes, whips, um, tight spandex, uh, you know, near nudity. I mean, all these things have happened within the course of the history of Catwoman. Batman's had a few, but artists usually, oh yeah, well, the cape, cowl, big deal. But when it comes to dressing women, they're like, oh, well, you know, she needs a revamp. It's like, we just did it a month ago. It's like, oh, this is good, this is great, you know. Catwoman was Batman's opposite number in a weird way. She's not patently evil like the Joker or any of the other arch criminals that run around Gotham City. She's not a villainous in the most diabolical of senses. She's not a murderess. She's not about gaining vengeance for any particular thing. She has her good moments, she has her bad moments, and she also has a struggle very similar to Batman's about what she should be, what her purpose is in life. Batman lives very much in a black and white world. There is good, there is evil, there is no gray, except for Catwoman. She tries to play both sides. And she's, you know, she usually gets Batman 
to back off and, and go, oh, okay, well, I'll let you off for today, but, you know. That's the weird line that she toes with Batman is this sort of romantic repartee where he feels bad about having to take her in. Why do you keep committing crimes? I love you so much, but he can't say he loves her. You know, it's that whole thing back and forth. She's not the one of the rogues gallery that winds up in jail all the time. For some, for some reason, she manages to talk her way out of it. The way that I often thought about her was that Batman was this ball of yarn that she enjoyed untangling. I think their incredible similarities are eventually what drive them apart. I mean, if you look at them as a couple, they should get along really well. You know, they both work night jobs, they both have to dress up in interesting uniforms to get those jobs done. But then again, she is an arch villain and he is a vigilante crime fighter. There must be something about her that basically breaks down Batman. Here's a character who could take out anybody physically, but on a sensual side, she's able to overwhelm him in ways that we don't know. I think it's interesting the way that opposites attract. He is something of a goody two-shoes, <laughs> and she is a naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an ongoing relationship that is fraught with love and difficulty. In 1966, Catwoman slinked onto the scene. A new television program called Batman biffed, powed, and bammed its way into homes every week. But ask anyone who their favorite villain was. It would have to be... Catwoman. Ask any actress what character they'd like to play in their life invariably it'd be Catwoman for many, many, many reasons. Curvy, smart, sexy, simply the cats of all meow. I think the first time that I saw the Catwoman character was in the early comic books. I'd get a dime for pulling weeds and go <laughs> and buy uh, the Batman comic books. When they asked me to do Catwoman, I didn't have to study the character of a Catwoman. I was living like a cat all my life. And I think in many ways I still do. <laughs> the comic book temptress was now alive and breathing, and three distinct women would go on to play the fiendishly delicious Catwoman alongside Adam West's Batman. When I hear the word Catwoman, uh, in my mind, it's simply uh, a gratitude that uh, these three wonderful ladies did the show. They were marvelous. In Batman's mind, oh, when, when they get out of jail, maybe we could date. People are going to want to see somebody who can put Batman back on his heels, who can take him out. To my knowledge, Julie Newmar was the only one that uh, we wanted for Cap. It was just a call to my apartment in New York and said, will you? Would you, two days, show up, be in costume, learn the lines, and let's do it. When I first met Julie as Catwoman, uh, I was uh, taken like every other man on the set. I realized that she was extremely talented and had a wonderful sense of what the character could be. I think Julie really had a hold on the fact that Catwoman is not all good or all bad. She knew how to work that costume. Nobody wears Lorex like she does. She would just squeeze you in at the right place. That's it. That's the secret. It's the costume, ladies. It's the costume. Julie brought uh, dimension to the character. She could be coquettish and seemingly naive, but at the same time reckless and a little fearsome, which was her job, you know, as a villain. Mostly it was the uh, dead-on sexuality. Oh, my dear boy, <laughs> life is sex. Sex is film, and it's everything that you do in life. She made it work where it was clean, it was acceptable by the families with their children watching it, but yet it had that tone to it that everybody knew she was talking about. If you really look at it, she's the only one that really ever put that over. We are two adult human beings, and uh, we're both interested in the same thing, happiness. 
She played with him, she toyed with him, she teased him, she manipulated him, she outsmarted him. It's everything that every little girl wants to do with any male person that comes in and takes up her space. When the Batman TV series was taken to the silver screen, one of America's favorite sweethearts would don the mask and claws of Catwoman. After the uh, first uh, introductory uh, season, we went immediately into a movie. And Julie, as I understood it, was unavailable. So along came Leanne Merriweather. I remember auditioning for the role and uh, thinking that there were gorgeous women out there in the office. And, and uh, I saw them coming in, and I thought, oh, what am I doing here? Lee Merriweather uh, gave it another approach. She gave it an acting approach. So I proceeded to curl up in the chair when uh, I got into the office with the producer and the director licked my hand, <laughs> purred. I really thought of it as being campy fun. Delightful! <laughs> oh yes, sexy, but, but kittenish sexiness. As the Batman series was returning to ABC for its second season in 1967, the TV bosses decided to take Catwoman into another direction. Lucky for me. We got a black Catwoman. One that was extremely beautiful and talented. There are only four of us and three of them. The odds would be most perturbing. I got a call, obviously, from, I think it was from a friend who was doing Batman and asked if I would be interested in doing Catwoman. So when they called me to come to the studio, they had a costume and all, so I put it on and they gave me the words to say. And there you are. I wasn't shocked, surprised, or anything, even though it was 1967. It just seemed right. A cat is a cat. She has no race, creed, or color, the way I feel about myself as an entertainer. I have no race, creed, or color. I belong to everyone. Now, our next move is to purloin, and if possible, permanently purge Batman, Batgirl, and Robin, the boy wonder. Eartha Kitt has a voice like no one. She has the purr of death. <laughs> Women who have men who come home from work, hard jobs, when she opens the door for them, she should say, hello, darling. Is there something I can do for you while she hands him his champagne or whatever? But the tones of her greetings should be always soft and gentle, like a cat. Eartha Kitt was a very sassy cat woman. She was definitely more claws out than any of the others. She had a little kitty chip on her shoulder. <laughs> I'll try to pull the wool over our eye slits. Now, would I do a thing like that? My sense of humor is to tease men anyway. So as a cat, I could go even further teasing the man. Of all the villains, I would say yes, a cat woman would be my favorite, for obvious reasons. I mean, I never dated the Joker. In 1992, fans of our feline temptress got another chance to sink their claws into the new and exciting tales of Catwoman in Batman, the animated series. Well, I knew there was a Catwoman. <laughs> and I sort of knew who Batman was, but I, uh, I was not a comic book reader as a, a younger person. So long, Dark Knight. Drop in anytime. Well, I didn't know much about her. I just had uh, a vague image of, of what, you know, obviously she needed to be sexy, and she was a woman who turned into a cat. Adrienne has a great voice. She was perfect for this because people who know Adrienne Barbeau from her heyday immediately associate her with a very sexy image. But people who don't know her just hear this great personality coming through for an animated character. She was a perfect choice for that. You told the police you found your cat burglar? Not yet. Why not? I didn't want you taken away like a common criminal. So you do care. I did not 
do very much research. I did not read the comic books. I think I instinctually had a, a sense about her voice, but I know that in the beginning, whenever we would, because uh, we would record one episode and then maybe two weeks would go by, three weeks would go by, we'd go back in and do another one, or maybe two. And initially I uh, had a lot of anxiety because I kept thinking, gosh, what was that voice I used? What, where was it? <laughs> My Catwoman evil? <laughs> well, she wasn't on the same side as Bruce Wayne. Let's put it that way. She wasn't on the same side as Batman. But uh, I, I didn't, as an actor, I don't think you ever approach a character you're going to play thinking this is a bad person. There's a lot of sexuality in Adrian Bobo's voice, so that even when you're looking at an animated, a uh, little animated cartoon running across your television screen, you're getting the sense that this, um, this character is having a real effect on whether or not it's the animated version of Batman or the actor that's playing Batman at the time. So you can tell you, you can tell she's having a lot of fun and she completely dove into that role and embraced it as her own. This ought to keep you out of my hair. It's made me a huge star with my seven-year-olds. <laughs> you know, they don't care about the uh, R-rated movies or Maud, which was what, you know, 20,000 years before they were born, or even the 20-year-old, you know. But Catwoman, that's cool. In June of the same year, Catwoman morphed herself yet again, leaping onto the big screen in the form of a leather-clad vixen, portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer in Tim Burton's Thrilling Batman Returns. Catwoman tore up theaters everywhere with paws of perfection. She was now larger than life and ready to roar. I thought it would be um, a couple of scenes and probably, you know, not a fully developed character. But I didn't care, I would have done it anyway because it's kind of idle from my childhood. And Then to my surprise I read the script and I, I, I found her to be very interesting and, and very complicated and, and actually um, quite a ch the biggest thing I've ever worked on. <sighs> Saved by kitty litter. Loved her. She's one of the great actresses of my time. A costume, she, her own essence. Oh, God, did she get a fabulous costume. You know, I, I mean, I had to show up and do my own makeup, and, and, and it wasn't anywhere near what they achieved in the film, so she's divine. I think Michelle Pfeiffer's uh, performance was quite good. You make it so easy, don't you? Always waiting for some bad man to save you. She took what was there from the past with Julie and the others and enhanced it. She had so many other emotional highlights that I would have loved to have played. It's chilly in here. I read a couple of cat psychology books. But for the most part, I really approached it from the standpoint of the psychology of, of the character and, and this dual personality and what that meant and, and everything really. Both in that it was very complicated and, and when you break it down, it really is like four different characters. And it was shot so out of continuity and over such a long period of time that I had to map it out much more specifically than I normally would do. Playfulness, um, and sometimes it'll be very real. And we didn't exactly know where those moments were going to be. And then after a while, it just kind of took on a life of its own. And it became obvious where it had to be. She really did something incredible, and she's doing things that, that even the stunt people couldn't do in, in terms of beauty and movement and just a kind of a feel. So, I mean, I, you know, just uh, putting live birds in her mouth. I mean, she just kind of went, did everything, really. <laughs> Speaking about this part, though, all the way back to the television series and all the way back to the original movie, um, and people come up to me now and they say, now, is she a good guy or is she a bad guy? was always left very ambiguous. 
And I always liked that. I always liked that they just let it be that. Just these things are fun, these transformation things and, you know, seeing where she comes and where she goes, it's really uh, it's fun to do. Is there anything our cat lady can do? Besides, of course, basking in the center of attention from her avid comic book admirers? Three, two, one, go! Powerful, fierce, and untamed. There was only one actress who could literally transform herself into the Catwoman of the 21st century. Halle Berry. What a perfect idea. The character I enjoy because Catwoman is iconic. What little girl wouldn't want to play Catwoman? Thank you. Appreciate that. Halle Berry is the most special thing about this Catwoman. I think what we were going for was sexy, sensual, today, contemporary. We wanted to distinguish ourselves enough from previous incarnations of Catwoman that we felt like we were unique. Over time, I think there have been about 11 Catwomen. Um, and our movie sort of presents this version of Catwoman as just one of many. She doesn't take the place of Selena Kyle or the great character that Eartha Kitt created many years ago. She's just another one. I think it's wonderful that they've asked her to do that character because she's very beautiful and she's got everything going for her. She has the moves and the sensibility, and she's very bright. But you have to have wit, and she has that. Yeah. Uh, the humor that she brings to it, and the you know the sensuality that she brings to the character, and the beauty that she brings to the character. Uh, you know, I think people will will forget all the other Catwomans when they see her portrayal. She's not like a, she's neither good nor bad. She's somewhere in between. It's interesting because the character that she's playing, Patience Phillips, uh, is truly a dichotomy. She has an alter ego. Uh, and I think Hallie perfectly embodies both, both characters. We have a character, we have a, a woman's story who's really struggling with her identity. Hi, Mr. Hedare. Uh, did you still want to see me or...? Sit. You know, it's been really interesting. On the onset, one might think, oh, it's a comic book character, you know. But really, I play three very different women. I play Patience Phillips, the first character, the in-between character, and then full-blown Catwoman. So the struggle for me and Pitoff and all of the people that worked with us to help create these characters was to always be a 